Hey everyone, Bob here. I'm at your radio call sign, Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. It's been a while since we put an installment of the Hamshack build out series in play, and today we're going to do that, talking very specifically about antenna switches. You've seen me in the shack from time to time using two different switches. One switch has all of my antennas, or I should say four of them connected from the outside, and another switch goes to multiple pieces of equipment here. So I have two switches controlling all of my HF activity. Right over there in the corner is another switch, and that deals with my UHF and VHF antennas and radios. So what is an antenna switch? You don't need any antenna switch in your shack, but the more options you want to give yourself, the more you would consider using a switch. Make sure if you do go in this direction that you pick out a high quality switch suitable for amateur radio for a hobbyist. I use Delta because of their reputation. I'll leave links in the description below to Amazon. If there are any, you would also want to check with your favorite amateur radio retailer. They may have a better price than Amazon unless you have Amazon Prime. I always buy a switch with more ports than I need. What do I mean by that? This Delta comes in at least two, maybe three. I always buy with one, two, three, four, right? So the center is your common, it's your input or your output. Um, so I always buy a switch that has four ports because I have found when I buy one with two ports or three ports, I always miss having the ability to expand to more. So I always give myself more options. I'm never disappointed with that direction. It does cost a few bucks more, but then I have more ports when I need them. Before we get to the most complicated setup that I have in my shack, and I'll grant they were most certainly more complicated setups out there in other people's shacks, let's just talk basically what an antenna switch does. An antenna switch controls traffic. Think of it as a traffic officer standing at an intersection where there's only one road behind you, but there are four in front of you and you've got cars in all four lanes wanting to pass by you to the single lane. You are choosing one by one by one whom to allow through and you're directing traffic. An antenna switch directs traffic. Here we are with an antenna switch in our shack, and the most simplistic way to look at this would be I have four antennas that I want to feed to one single transceiver. And by choosing which position on the switch, one, two, three, or four, that determines what antenna is feeding my transceiver. Now, conversely, you can do the exact opposite. You can have one antenna feeding four transceivers, just like I'm doing here in this illustration. Okay, so I think you understand the basics. What do you do if you want to interject a tuner into this scenario? Do I have the ability to do that? And you most certainly do. You just simply interject a tuner in this location, and now all four of your antennas can go into your tuner, in my case, an LDG tuner. I'm not sure that's the tuner that I have. As a matter of fact, it's not the exact tuner I have, but it's good for the illustration. What do you do if in port number four, you have a resonant antenna? My LDG tuner has a bypass mode, so I can bypass on any antenna that I want or tune on any antenna that I want, and then it's going to feed into my transceiver as a matched signal. In my shack, I'm running two switches to control my HF gear. This controls my antennas. I can select between four. I've got several antennas in the attic antenna farm, and then I have one stealth deployed in the HOA outside, and then I use temporary antennas for setups testing frequently. This then takes my signal to uh, either another transceiver or to a QRP transceiver like my FX4CR or to an analyzer. I'll show you an illustration of that in a moment. So let's get into the diagrams where we get into more specifics about using two antenna switches, and we'll go in the no 
tuner version. So in this case, again, I have four antennas coming external to the home. It's actually at my single point utility box at the exterior of my home that handles all of my grounding and lightning suppression. And then if I wanna take that signal from one of those four antennas, into the other switch, I can do that. And from that switch, I can take it in a number of different locations. You can see that this port here is left open. There's no problem in doing that. It's just there for future expandability. But in this mode, I can run any one of my four antennas and I can choose antenna number four and send it to my FX4CR, or I could send it to my IC7300 by going to port number four on the second one. I could check, let's say that my Mm, my Chameleon F-Loop 2.0 is in the attic with a tuner and it's in position one. So I would select position one here. Over here, I might select position three so I can get what the SWR reading is on that antenna so I can tune it up. So this is the no tuner version. It gives me the ability to work with multiple pieces of equipment and multiple antennas simultaneously giving me the absolute most flexibility over the equipment that I'm running. Can you do the same thing in two switch version with a tuner? Well, of course we can do that. Let's come back over here. And all we're simply doing at this point is something similar as we did before. And we're installing a tuner here between the two switches. So it's just like before, only I'm taking my signal from my tuner into the second switch before it goes to any one of my devices. And again, I can put my tuner in bypass mode so I can work with resonant antennas or so that I can uh, seclude or isolate that F loop that might be over here on position number one and check its SWR. As a matter of fact, let me show you that illustration right now. Let me explain what's happening here and how I tune my mag loop using this analyzer in the shack. So the FX4CR and the analyzer is connected to my mag loop. My mag loop is 30 feet away from me in the attic space. And when I say that they're both connected, all I simply mean is that they're going into this switch right now. The switch is connected to the analyzer and listen, you heard the radio come to life. Now the radio is connected to the mag loop. Now back to the analyzer. Let me go back to this angle. I'm at 12.3. I'm on the analyzer. Now I'm gonna to go to the radio. All right, you saw the radio come to life and my SWR here goes to 19.9. It's because it's not connected to anything. Now I'm gonna go back to the analyzer. So all I need to do at this point is use my remote control to turn the motor on uh, the capacitor shaft on my mag loop and that's how I tune. See how quickly that came down to 1.2 to 1? That's ridiculous. So just to show you that again, we'll, we'll get far away from it. There we're at 10.8 to 1. Hit the tune button, hit the tune button again. Now the jog is a shorter step and I'm at 1, 2, 3 to 1. That's how I tune my mag loop in the shack with an analyzer, I just use my antenna switch back there and that lets me quickly go back and forth between my gear and get to perfect SWR so I can operate with my FX4CR. As you watch my videos and you see me from time to time using these two switches to go between antennas or equipment, I can understand why that would be confusing. You can't see where my coax is running behind the workstation, so you're not really sure how this is set up. I've gotten many questions on the subject. I thought it was time to finally talk about this. You don't need antenna switches to operate your shack. You can go single antenna to single transceiver and be just fine. If you have multiple antennas, go with a simplistic setup, one switch to drive your multiple antennas to one piece of gear. If you need something more complicated like I'm doing, I hope this helps you understand how you pull this off. All right, there we are. Another installment in the books on the Hamshack build out series. Hope you found this useful friend. Talk to you soon. 73.